All right, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bar Tinsel Lab, and in this video, we're going to be looking at non-classical feints. First of all, what is a feint? A feint is a movement that I do to cause a desirable effect on the opponent. So for example, I may fake or feint throwing a left hand, a circular left hand, a big looping hook, to make this chap move to his left. So I've feinted that and made him move where I want him to move. Once I've done that, I can then clock him with the right hand. So I may feint to trigger a physical reaction. If an opponent is overactive in parrying a shot, if, he's, if he parries over the time, he drops his hand and he parries, I might throw a legitimate jab that's parried. A legitimate jab that's parried. I then might start to throw or feint the next jab, but in reality, turn that into an overhand hook. So physically making the opponent do things I want them to do. It may well be, for example, if you're involved in kicks and it's combat sport orientated, I may twitch this leg to make the opponent raise their leg to shin block. I might twitch, and therefore that's my feint, and then I might actually smash into his leg. So once he's raised his shin to block and he's standing on one leg, then it might be where I take his one remaining leg out. But in any case, the purpose of a feint to get the opponent to either physically do something that you want them to do, or, and as importantly, to disrupt their thought process. So if the opponent's thinking about closing, he's thinking about punching, he's thinking about attacking, hum, I might faint that shot, and he's got something to think about in his mind. He's got to think, there's risk, there's danger here. I'm resetting his thought process, interrupting his mind, disrupting his kazushi, applying and balancing to his mind. So there's a number of reasons why I might throw a feint, and predominantly we see them in combat sports. But they're also very, very important for self-protection, self-defense. And I'm going to go through some non-classical feints. So how can we build on the principles of make him move in a way that we want him to, and make him disrupt, how disrupt his thought process? How can I apply that in a modern self-defense context? So Easy ones to start with are things like using apparel. So I, for instance, I might be all supplicating, I might be here, I might be afraid, and I might decide to throw or strike with the hat just to get that reaction for me to fire a shot in. So I might have caused a physical flinch, turn, something like that on the opponent, which might give me a bit more jawbone. They give me a bit more room to fire a clean shot. So from here, boom! I can fire that in. So a non-classical feint, whether the hat hits him or not, something's moved rapidly in his direction. Something's moved in his direction and he needs to deal with it to some degree. His mind needs to cope with it. So that might physically cause a feint to happen, or at least psychologically, the feint, you know, or in reality, if it hits him, it then becomes a strike, but there we go. But it's the motion, it's the oh! It's the ability for me to make him react, make him flinch, make him startle, make him do something or do nothing. These are very important things. And if you think about it, and if you extend that, it may well be that you know, I'm coming back from the gym and I've got my bag and my faint reaction might be, I'm gonna throw this heavy gym bag at his foot. Boom! So I've taken his attention down low and I've smashed him in the face. So again, I've applied a piece of apparel could be a hat, could be a bag, could be a brolly, could be a coat, could be anything. Anything I can launch at or near him to make him think in a direction, to make him move in a direction, or to make him momentarily do nothing, affording me the possibility to attack to a non-classical feint using your apparel. It's a really important drill to build in. So again, take some time to practice these things because they are useful. If you've spent a thousand hours a month practicing, you know, boom, your right hand or your fucking favorite kick or whatever the fuck you want to do. I don't really care. At least 5% of that should come as a result of how can I trick an opponent into thinking I'm going to do something else and then do my favorite shot. Your favorite thing to do might not always be possible unless you apply a feint. And for self-protection, non-classical feints are very, very useful. Other things that you may consider, projectiles. So, for example, you might have coins. You might, if you're walking on the beach, pick up a couple of stones, beer bottle caps, any number of small detritus. And again, these can be in your pocket and they make very effective tools. 
So again, for a non-classical feint, you can work from your fence, you, know, you can work from position of supplication, whatever you want to do. You can launch these, boom, fire that shot straight in. People will flinch and move and falter in the face of projectiles coming towards their face. Coins, stones, receipts, detritus, anything. Pap! Launch that into his face, then you can get that shot. And like I said, some feints cause a physical reaction, i.e. stunned, moving, flinching, covering something. Or they cause him to do nothing, which is equally beneficial. The punch he might have just thought about throwing is no longer thinking about because he's got a face full of pennies and then I'm coming in with a shot. But it's important that the timing between the feint and the genuine attack is as close as possible. So I don't want to throw the coins, wait three beats, and then do the shot. I want the coins to the shot to be in the same cadence as a one-two. Coin shot, boom, 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 boom. So again, these are things you can think about. This could be your wallet, your mobile phone. It could be any fucking thing, the detritus from your pocket. This is quite good in kind of mugging theft scenarios where you've got it out, you would normally hand it over, you feel like this is actually gonna go further than that, further than the point in which you find it acceptable to go. You might see a van, you might think this is not just a normal street robbery, whatever, your discretion on that. Get the detritus up in the face, cause the flinch, the startle, or the non-action of your opponent, boom, boom, and then you can fill that gap with violence. Lovely. You may decide to do things like liquid projectiles. This is a very important one to spend time on because a lot of the places where we're attacked are places where we're eating, drinking, and making merry. So if you imagine the amount of times it kicks off at pubs, clubs, cinemas, house parties, shopping centers where there are people drinking coffee and having a normal life, commuting on a plane, on a train. Think about how much you eat and drink. It's fucking everywhere. Food and drink is fucking everywhere. And you are a regular human being, and you will probably be eating and drinking in those places too. So being able to think about how could I use those items to my advantage. So I'm not going to get my tatami floor absolutely sudden, so you're going to have to use your imaginations. Again, I'm using an oversized Coke bottle here just because it's easier for you to see. So if I've got here, I'm drinking, whatever. My non-classical feint might be to put this liquid in his face. There's some solid ways to do this. My favourite way to do this when working on drills is to not try and launch the water. To try and use your physical momentum to launch the water often ends up with a small amount of water coming out and it's very easily telegraphed. So my recommendation is you just squeeze the bastard. You squeeze the bastard. And this could be polystyrene coffee cup, Starbucks cup, anything that I can compress. Boom! That's a much easier way than trying to use your physical actions to launch the hot water. Squeeze the fucker, whether it's a cup, a bottle, or what have you. A lot of nightclubs have uh, plastic pint snap. Near you, you have your beer. Sadly, some dickheads have ruined proper pint glasses for the rest of us. Sadly, now we have to have plastic glasses. But again, nice and easy for you to squeeze into a face. So again, you might be holding it. You might be carrying stuff on the way to your cinema. You don't, don't know billions of scenarios where you could be attacked. So from here, the ability to fire this, boom, and then fill that gap with something else. Always fill the gaps with violence or escape, but violence. And here, I've got my liquid, got my cup. You know, it could be that I'm, you know, standing up on the train, I'm on the tube, you know, wherever the fuck I am, there's likely to be liquids. They don't need to be hot, they can be cold. In fact, I did an exercise with uh, Brett McKenzie, shout out to Brett McKenzie of Viking Kapap. And in it, I was playing a terrorist, and it was an active shooter scenario, and I was bursting around an environment, and the guys had to stop me. I knew that they were trying to stop me, and I'm a big guy, and I'm awkward, and I'm pretty skilled, so it's difficult to stop me. It's difficult to stop me. And for the purposes of the drill, I was taking it quite seriously. So there was an environment, I heard people behind a room, kicked in some doors, and walked in with the gun. Uh, and one of the guys just took a small cup of water, put that water in my face. Now, I knew this was going to happen because I ruined the drill for everyone else a couple of minutes before because I came out too early. But either way, so I knew the water was going to hit me in the face. I knew that there'd be a group of people trying to take my weapon. 
I was determined to not look a fucking idiot in front of all those people. And that, you know, that's just a low level of determination, but still determination, you know, I wanted to fulfill my part of the objective. So I burst into the room, I've got my gun, cold water in my face, and it stopped me. It stopped me for about one second and allowed guys that are physically smaller and weaker than me to swarm me and get their hands on the weapon and take it away. And, and that's something I knew was coming, that I was mentally and physically prepared for, and it still stopped me. So there's great power in even just cold water, cold liquid getting you in the face. It is a man stopper. Not for a long period of time, that's why I say fill the gap with violence. I buy myself a small gap in time and you need to fulfill that. So if we're looking at non-classical feints, I could be pub, club, bar, restaurant, coffee shop, train, tube. Think of all the environments. Don't just say, I don't go to bars because I'm, so I'm safe. It can happen anywhere. You are eating and drinking anywhere. On a plane in the sky, you will be eating and drinking. So again, your non-classical feint. Squeeze and launch it here to get the freeze or to get the reaction you want. Boom! And then fire that shot in. It's very important to know and be comfortable with work with liquids and, and feel the effect they have on you. They're actually very, 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 very useful. Other important things. Now, those are some physical flinch reactions. You know, throwing the clothing, the pocket detritus, the liquids. These are all things that typically cause a physical reaction, make me deliver a physical reaction. Other things you may wish to consider are quite simple, such as misdirection of the eyes. So looking at the eyes, glance to the right, glance to the left. Cause a momentary piece of doubt in their mind. It's not as obvious as, who the fuck's that? Although that can work. In reality, it's just the small darting of the eyes. Look to the left, boom, you fire the shot in. Making people pause or think or react is an important thing to do. When people are pre-fight, they are communicating. Even if we're really aggressive and we're talking to each other here, we're still talking, no one's fighting yet. Typically we keep some degree of eye contact. So a fleeting movement of the eye is disconcerting, is worrying, makes him think just for a second what might be happening. And you've got to fill that gap with violence. So get used to talking, using words, going askance with your eyes. <laughs> Practice this in your drills. Practice using your eyes, using your hands, using your head to look in directions. Make sure, however, that you don't offer an opportunity for him to strike you. You just need that non-classical feint, that movement of the eye, movement of the head, movement of the hand. You just need him to pause just for one millisecond. One millisecond, his attention goes off me and onto whatever he thinks is in the environment. And that allows you to then fill that gap with violence. So using misdirection of your eyes, looking left, looking right, looking up, looking down, of your hands, placement, touching stuff, putting your hand up to say, you know, stop, whatever, wait. He's gonna turn a little bit to see what that is, don't you? Bam! Fire of fear. Using your misdirection is really, really important. Because up to this point, up until the first blow, this is social. We're talking, we're communicating. So I'm gonna use communication as a feint, non-verbal or verbal, to then fire the shot in. Really, really important. And again, simple ones, simple ones to do, spitting. So again, if you're in this distance, you're in this fence, bam! Just the, the sound is important. The sound is important. That's why the bottle also. If I just chuck the water, that's only one part of a faint. If I go and make that crunching sound, it's gonna add more data for his mind to process. It's that crunch, it's that water to the face, it's that lurch of the thing towards your eyes. So suddenly I've assaulted his ears with the sound. I've assaulted his sense, his sense of touch, because the liquids hit him. And I've assaulted his eyes, because the bottle has moved towards his face. So again, suddenly, there's lots of things for his mind to deal with, and in that small momentary gap, bam, I fill the gap with violence. Spitting is simple, because you can do it from the fence, but sell it. It's like professional wrestling. You have to sell it. You can't just go, you need him to, you know, you need, even if you don't spit, even if nothing comes out of your mouth, you need to be able to sell it in. So much of fainting is like professional wrestling. You need to sell the show. So, you know, a bit like coming full circle back to combat sports. People that aren't very good at combat sports faint poorly. They just move their shoulder or twitch their hand. And this opponent, experienced, considered opponent, will know that's a faint and do fuck all. If I start to really kind of move on him, 
If he starts to think there might be a threat of that turning into a jab or a post and a shot, he's going to react. I have to sell it more than just that small, subtle moment. It needs to be more than subtle. It needs to be more than subtle. So again, like a professional wrestler, you need to sell it. So whether you're doing it in a combat sports fashion, I'm going to flinch or move to make you move, or to make you not move, to make you act, react, or do nothing at all. Or if it's things like the bottles, the pocket detritus, the apparel, the, the spitting, I need to assault more than one sense. I need to make your ears work, your eyes work, your mind work, your body work. The whole point of a feint is to make him work, to make something happen, giving me the time to fill that gap with explosive nasty violence. There are many, 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 many different types of non-classical flinch, uh, non-classical feint, so do try and work on them. But the key ones will be apparel-based or object-based, such as carrying gym bags, laptop bags, stuff like that. And get used to then playing with it. Like you saw earlier, I put the gym bag down near his foot. So I threw it a little bit towards his foot. Boom! The bag has taken his attention down low. And the hand has taken, hopefully, his consciousness up top. So again, you're using the feint to get to the end result, which is just knock him out or knock him down. I put his attention down with the feint. And then hopefully taken him up top with the proper shot. So... Non-classical feints, build them around daily life, build them around daily life scenarios. You're on a plane, you've just got your small little couple of orange juice, whatever, it kicks off. Big fucking drunk rugby player on a plane. Are you going to just fight him conventionally? No, because he's fucking massive. Might you want to splash that in his face and then punch him right in the throat? Maybe. You know, it's Work around different examples. You're out with the kids, you're at a coffee shop, you're at the bar, you're at the pub. You're at a club, you're at, you're at a gig, and you're standing this close together with your cheap beer and everyone's moshing around you. What can I do? Yeah, but feints require sensory action. I need to make him believe the thing is going to happen. I need to do it, or at least make him strongly believe I'm going to do it. And in that gap, I fill with violence. Apparel or objects, shrapnel, wallet, phone, keys, coins, whatever, again, sell it and then hit. You've got some of your more subtle communicative ones using your voice, using your eyes, looking left or right, using your hands to communicate with people that aren't there. All of these things can work. Using spitting, all of these come under non-classical feints and you should develop those as well and alongside your more combat sport orientated feints. You still need to work. You know, I'm feinting that shot, I'm feinting that shot here, I'm moving that leg, but remember to sell it. You need to set it different opponents and different people for more or less for types of feints. The good thing is that in self-protection scenarios, people aren't necessarily so canny towards it. And their sympathetic reflex, because it's high tension, high stress, high adrenaline, will make them do something. Whereas when you're sparring and when you're fighting, both people are very well trained and they understand that fainting is part of the game. So do understand that you know, the successes or the lack of success that you may have with combat sports fainting doesn't necessarily correlate with what you can get with self-protection drills and work there. But non-classical feints, give them a play, enjoy.